Welcome back to more history. In today's episode, we'll be looking at the Battle of Hastings and how this battle changed England forever. A king dies without an heir, and three rivals claim their right to one throne. But who will be the next king of England? Let's learn some more history. King Edward, also known as Edward the Confessor, was the last Anglo-Saxon king of England. England had powerful lords who the king wanted to keep happy. The most powerful family in England at the time was the Godwinson family. They were noble lords and owned a lot of land. King Edward had married into their family to combine the crown with the most powerful family in England. Sounds like a great plan for Edward. However, Edward and his wife were not able to have kids and there was no heir to the throne. On January 5th, 1066, Edward died, and this is when the drama begins. Introducing the three rivals, Harold Godwinson, or Harold G, Harold Hardrada, or Harold H, and William Duke of Normandy. All three men believed that they had a claim to the throne. Harold G was part of the Godwinson family, and Edward's brother-in-law. Harold claimed that Edward said that he should be the next king, right before he died. Harold H. from Norway believed that he should be the king due to political agreements that happened long before the death of King Edward. Finally, William, who was from Normandy, France, and of Viking descent. William claimed that King Edward had promised that he become the next king, and he believed because of his bloodline and being a distant relative to Edward the Confessor that he should be the next king. This is a lot of drama. Imagine if social media had been around during this time. So who will become the next king of England? Harold G. becomes the King of England, and his reign will last less than a year. The entire time of his reign, his rivals were preparing to battle for the throne. Harold H. of Norway struck first. In mid-September, his invasion force landed on the northern English coast, sacked a few coastal villages, and headed toward the city of York. Harold H.'s army had taken over the city of York, and while this happened, King Harold and his English troops marched to York. His army traveled over 200 miles in a little more than a week. During the Battle of Stamford Bridge, Harold H. was killed. But remember, William thought he should be king. He had been preparing his troops for battle and to travel across the English Channel. However, some historians claim that the weather was bad and forced him to wait, while others say that he intentionally waited to attack because he knew that King Harold and his English army would be fighting in the north and he would be able to capture the city of London without any problems. William and his troops arrived on September 28, 1066, on Britain's southeast coast, with thousands of troops and cavalry. William was unsure of who his opponent would be, but he's ready to battle. King Harold had to march his troops 250 miles to southern England, where William, Duke of Normandy, arrived to battle for the throne. On October 14, 1066, the armies met near the village of Hastings. The English were on foot, but held the high ground while the Normans were on horseback and had skilled archers. William and his Norman army defeat Harold and the English army. Supposedly King Harold dies after getting shot in the eye with an arrow, but this is a debated theory in history. Regardless, King Harold is dead and a new king would be crowned. It was almost an unfair battle due to King Harold's army having to travel to the north to fight Harold H and the Norwegians, while William and the Normans were just waiting to strike. After his victory at Hastings, William marched to London, overcoming local resistance, and was crowned king in Westminster Abbey on Christmas Day, 1066. While William's coronation occurred, the audience inside the church was asked if they approved of William as the new king. The French-speaking Normans and the English-speaking Saxons then shouted their approval of William becoming king. The Norman soldiers outside thought the noise inside the church was an assassination attempt and began setting fire to houses around the abbey. Smoke filled the church, and the congregation fled, and riots broke out. Inside, William and the officiating clergy completed the service despite the chaos. Long-term impacts of the Normans winning the Battle of Hastings include French became the language of the kingdom, and it mixed with Old English to produce our modern-day English. William introduces feudalism to England. He also has the Domesday Book created, which is a census of the lands and the people of England. It was among one of his notable achievements. The Bayou Tapestry is an embroidery measuring over 230 feet long and 20 inches wide. It describes the Norman invasion of England and the events that led up to it. 
If you enjoyed this video, check out some of my other videos on my channel. Like, subscribe, and share.